Okay, lights, camera, action. Again, welcome everybody to our 2023 Create and Connect Fund info session. I, my name is Alex Wailinos. I'm the Programs Associate here at the Laundromat Project, and I will be leading today's session. Hi everyone, I'm Issa Saldana. I am the Senior Manager of Artists and Community Development at the Laundromat Project, and I am just here for support on today's session as well. Nice to be here. Thank you, Isa. Um, so if you're here to learn more about our Create and Connect Fund microgrant opportunity, you are in the right place. So to uh, start us off, I always love a good agenda. I love structure. Um, and so we're going to start off this session with expectations. So today, um, over the course of this hour, we are going to talk about the laundromat project, who we are and what we do. We'll give a brief overview of the Create and Connect Fund and what it's about. Um, we will review eligibility um, for uh, potential applicants interested in, create, in the Create and Connect Fund, the timeline of the Create and Connect Fund and its uh, expectation, the, the associated expectations, um, how to apply, we'll, we'll run through the submittable application, um, and we'll also sort of uh, address any questions folks um, submitted through the Google form earlier um, at the end of the uh, session. Um, yeah. In addition to that, you know, we're also going to sort of clarify a little more uh, cleanly, you know, what we're looking for in, in terms of potential applicants and then open up the floor um, for folks who have any additional questions. Okay. So, mission. The laundromat project, um, at the laundromat project, you know, our whole goal is to advance artists and artists and neighbors as change agents in their own communities. Um, we are an arts and community-based nonprofit. Um, we are Black woman-founded, POC-centered, POC-focused in our work, um, and we operate primarily in Bed-Stuy. So a little more about the Laundromat Project. The Laundromat Project was founded in 2005. Uh, we, again, as I said, Black Root and POC-centered POC arts organization. Um, we provide training and resources to artists and activists through a number of different avenues in our programming. Um, Create and Connect Fund is one of them where we see the creative and civic ideas of folks in our community. Um, and another avenue of that, of that is uh, the Create Change Program, um, which fosters the, the artistry and community building practice of, of POC artists through our Create Change Fellowship and Create Change Residency programs. Um, in addition, you know, as an arts organization, we support public art projects specifically um, and are primarily interested in issues or in, and projects that tackle um, topics like food injustice, gentrification, and climate change and community safety, to name a few. This is not an exhaustive list. Great. And in case uh, you don't know where we're located in Bed-Stuy, our address is 1476 Fulton Street, Brooklyn, New York, zip code 11216. What you see here um, is an image of our storefront um, being activated last year in about May 2022 um, when we sort of let our doors open. So to get into the nitty gritty, why everyone is here for today's info session, the Bedside Create and Connect Fund. What is it, why, um, and how um, can we sort of collaboratively create change together? So the Bedside Create and Connect Fund is a community microgrant fund for creative initiatives and projects that are rooted in community, foster connections and ignite conversations and or collaboration. Um, the goal of the Bedside Create and Connect Fund is to support and see the creative ideas and civic actions of artists, cultural practitioners, community builders, organizers, and makers in Bedside. How will we do this? Um, the Laundromat Project um, will do this by providing $1,000 of microgrant funding towards um, each awarded project or each successful applicant in the process. Um, we will be we will be funding up to 20 proposals for this 2023 cycle. 
eligibility. So um, at the laundromat project, um, and specifically for this Create and Connect Fund um, application, anyone who is a self-organized group or collective is el eligible to apply for the fund. Um, organized Self-organized groups and collectives can include, but are not limited to, sewing clubs, writers groups, and informal artist collectives. Um, if you are an affiliate or member of a formal organization, such as a block association or a tenant association, you are eligible to apply, um, provided you meet the other guidelines, of course, and this goes the same for any other applicants. Um, and of course, individuals who are at least 18 years of age or older, living, working, or otherwise committed to invest in bed -Stuy, are also eligible to apply for the Create and Connect Fund. Proposals, um, and this is sort of the more important aspect of, of the eligibility process. Proposals must be responsive to or centered within the bed -Stuy, um, neighborhoods and communities. Um, and it must focus on community building, community recovery, and collective wellness within the bed within bed -Stuy's neighborhoods. And you can interpret, you know, to give more nuance to that, you can interpret community building, community recovery, and, co and collective wellness as you please, you can make an argument for it um, based on how you sort of approach that in your own practice. Um, and also you are free to sort of engage a community of your choice so long as that community resides within bed -Stuy, to clarify that process. Also, you know, in this application, we're really looking for um, applicants who incorporate elements of art or creativity into uh, their proposed project. Moving on, what is art, right? I feel like that's that's a, a big question that a lot of folks have um, when applying for this fund. So without further ado, at the Laundromat Project, we define art as visual, media, literary, and performing arts, curation, scholarship, education, healing, community organizing, cultural traditions, productions and practices. Um, so you do not have to consider yourself an artist to apply to the Create and Connect Fund. We have a very expansive and um, broad definition of art, um, you know, which you can find uh, more so, more detail on, on our website and on the Create and Connect Fund application or webpage on the laundromatproject.org website. Um, so you can be a professional artist, you can be a casual artist, right? You can just be someone in the community with uh, a spark of creativity and you want to incorporate some creative aspect to a community project that you are that you would like to see happen in Bed-Stuy. Um, as, as long as there's some kind of element of creativity, um, you know, it, it's, it's open to, to exploration through the Create and Connect Fund. So we talked about eligibility requirements. Um, what about ineligible projects? So what the Create and Connect Fund uh, will not support is the solo production of artworks made for personal practice. Um, the Create and Connect Fund has a community-focused aspect to it. So we want to ensure that um, projects that are being supported um, make some kind of community impact within Bed-Stuy. Um, another type of ineligible project would be proposals of no involvement, impact, or engagement with additional stakeholders or a broader community, um, which is an iteration of what I just said. Um, and also, you know, projects, events, and our activities that require an admission or participation or participation fee. So we want to open up, we want to fund projects that are open to as many people as possible. And in our eyes, that means funding projects that um, do not present a pay barrier um, or a you know cost barrier to participation. Prioritization. So how will we prioritize the the wonderful applications that that come through or submittable? Um, so, you know, we see this fund, the Create and Connect Fund, as a way to help counter structural systemic injustices injustices in Bed Stuy. is an, it is an extension of the larger body of work. That the laundromat project aims to do, um, you know, in in advancing change. Um, so, in no particular order, we will prioritize applications from um, potential applicants who are either born or raised in Bedsty, 
generational bed residents and residents who have lived in bed for more than 10 years. We will also prioritize application from individuals who identify as Black, Indigenous, Native, and or people of color. We'll prioritize applications from individuals in the disability community, including immunocompromised individuals, as well as individuals who identify as LGBTQIA+. Um, so this is you know, uh, an overview of the applications we, we will prioritize in our process. But if you have a really good idea, um, I still encourage you to apply um, and, and send in your proposal. So how to apply. Um, if you've signed up for this webinar, that means you have seen the Create and Connect Fund webpage on the laundromatproduct.org. Um, within that webpage, and also as you can see here on this slide, um, you can submit your applications at the laundromatproject.submittable.com where you can find the 2023 Create and Connect Fund open application. Um, and some important dates to keep in mind through this process, this application, the application process for Create and Connect opened last week on April 10th, 2023. Um, the applications will close in about a month on May 4th, 2023 by 11.59 p.m. And I made sure to include 11.59 p.m. in the slides because the submittable application is set to automatically close by that time. So if you press enter at 12 a.m., um, it is technically May 5th, 2023. It will not go through the submittable. So please be um, mindful of the, the time you give yourself to fill out these applications. And once applications are submitted, um, you know, we will go through and review these applications um, and announce the award notifications by May 31st, 2023. So within a month. And I'll just um, add a couple quick notes here um, about just definitely thinking about getting those applications in on the early side. Um, applications will close by May 4th at 11.59 Eastern time, just in case you're applying from somewhere else. Um, but if we receive, and this is a rolling um, application. And so if we receive um, 20 amazing applications like this week, um, and we decide to award all of those applications. At that point, the um, project will be closing. Um, and so definitely um, the sooner the better um, because it is rolling and that there's more information about what that means on our FAQs on our webpage. But essentially, um, we will meet weekly to review the applications that come in each week um, and we'll be um, making decisions across that time period. Um, so definitely encouraging early applications from folks. Yeah, the sooner the better. That's the motto for any application you'll you'll encounter in your creative or um, community-oriented career. So thank you, Isa. So application review. I am going to switch screens for a bit. Oops. So right now I'm gonna take you to the submittable page um, so we can look at the application overall together. So when you go to the laundromat project uh, dot submittable dot com webpage, it'll take you to this landing page, which gives um, a more in-depth explanation of who the laundromat project is um, and our various programs um, that we offer throughout the year. Uh, and as you can see, you know, the 2023 Create and Connect Fund is the first application listed over here on the submittable page. If you click on it, it will take you to the application, um, which has uh, even more in-depth information on requirements, um, eligibility, and things we are looking for in terms of potential applicants and proposed projects. So we have more information about the Create and Connect Fund here. We have the key dates that were stated uh, few moments ago, we have in-depth guidelines, um, you know, to, to facilitate, you know, the, the shaping of your proposal as you draft, as you draft them and submit them through submittable. We have selection criteria and something I want to highlight here in the selection criteria that if you are selected um, and awarded the Korean Connect Fund, 
um, projects and activities are expected to be developed, installed, and performed by the applicant, by you, independently without production support from the laundromat project. Yeah, and eligibility. Um, eligibility is here in case you need to reference it. Examples of the types of eligible, pro eligible projects that you know we've hosted in the past or are open to are available, also available on the submittable. This is not an exhaustive list. If you aren't sure whether your project is uh, eligible for the Crane Connect Fund, we are always open to an email and open to discussion. And you can always reach us at community at laundromatproject.org with any questions. And so to go to the application specifically, um, we're gonna ask for your address, uh, contact information, email, phone. And then we're gonna ask some identifying questions uh, and ask you for more information on your relationship to bed -Stuy, since this is a bed -Stuy focused um, micro grant. more specific questions on the sort of nature of your project, what kind of activation it will be. I'll just select random. Random choices, so I can move along. And we'll ask for your name, identifying information, contact information, um, whether you're associated um, with a collective or another organization or applying individually. We'll ask you how you heard about this opportunity and to sort of submit a short bio about yourself. And, you know, we really love to hear sort of how folks learn about this opportunity so you can spread the word um, with, with more efficiency next year um, and for years to come. Again, you know, asking about, you know, why this project um, is of interest to you and what connection you have to bed and what impact it has on the community that you're aiming to sort of engage with within bed -Stuy. And of course, project proposal, what is your project idea? Um, also something to keep in note, you know, within the application, there are word limits there. So you don't have to write an extensively long uh, proposal. And we'll of course ask how the funds will support your project. This isn't an exhaustive list. You don't need to have all sort of all the answers right now as you're planning logistics for, for your potential project or proposal, but we just like to have an idea of how the funds will be used. Yeah. And of course, you know, we we very interested in knowing which audience, which community are you trying to engage with within Bedsty. Again, um, you are open to engage a community of your choice so long as it is a community within Bed-Stuy, Brooklyn. Yeah, and of course, we, we definitely wanna know what is the community impact of your project? Um, everything in the application, um, you know, if it has a red star, it means it's required. Um, so I would, you know, pay, pay attention to that and consider and think deeply about how you would like to respond to these types of questions. Yeah. And so those are the sort of general application questions. We'll also go sort of ask clarifying questions to determine um, how we should prioritize your application, as I stated a little earlier in our info session. And some optional demographic um, questions, um, if you are so willing so we can measure our own sort of reach and impact as well with, with in terms of folks who are applying to the Korean Connect Fund. Yeah, and that's the sort of whole of the application on submittable. Um, once you have everything drafted, I, I, I strongly recommend you draft your responses to the application questions either on Google Docs or on Word, so you have a copy of it. You can then copy paste them into the, the, the form fields here on submittable. And then once you have all of those um, answers good and ready, you can hit apply. I won't hit apply now because then it'll actually submit something. Um, but that is the laundromat project submittable um, application process. So returning to our slideshow, 
what are we looking for um, in terms of potential applicants? So key things to keep in mind as you develop your um, Create and Connect Fund proposal, um, we're, we're looking for projects that are feasible, meaning projects that um, can happen within uh, one year of the disbursement of the funds. Um, we're looking for projects that have a clear idea of, of what they're trying to do, um, the folks that they're trying to engage with, and the, in, the, the impact they want to um, bring to bed and its communities. You know, we looking for, we're looking for proposals and applications that are specific um, with the communities and audiences they aim to engage with. Um, and of course, you know, the, the entire point of the Create and Connect Fund is to, to seed, you know, the idea, to seed ideas that bring uh, community building to the forefront of bed -Stuy, that facilitate community connections through civic practice, through artistic engagement, through creative ideas. So relationship building is, is something we'll definitely be, definitely be on the lookout for um, as we review the Create and Connect Fund applications. Community and cultural impact. You know, we we, we want to know what you're thinking of in terms of uh, the impact you're going you're trying to create in Bedside through your proposed project, but you know, even long term as well. Sort of how you see this um, project facilitating your own sort of larger body of work and practice. You know, we're interested in projects that are responsive and accountable to community rhythms. Um, and to explain that a little bit more. Um, you know, we're really interested in folks that have their ears to the ground, that are really sort of working in the weeds on the front lines um, in the community in bed -Stuy, and that are, are proposing projects that are directly responding to a certain community, um, community interests. And, you know, as I said a little earlier in our info session, you know, we're really interested in projects that are uh, focused on community, collective wellness, resilience, or recovery. Again, you are free to sort of interpret um, those words, those phrases, as you see fit, as long as you can make an argument for it um, within your proposal. And lastly, but not least, you know, we're looking for for proposals that are intentional, that are thoughtful, that you know, really keep collaboration and engagement with the community in mind um, within their project. Yeah. So now moving into the sort of question and answer portion um, of our info session, a few of you uh, here today submitted some questions ahead of time, and I would like to take a moment to address them. Um, yes, I do read the Google Forms. Um, <laughs> so thank you to anyone who submitted questions. They're very helpful. Um, so first question here, um, can awardees borrow supplies from the laundromat project, holding tables being an example? So as mentioned a little earlier, um, if you are awarded the microgrant, the Korean and Connect Fund microgrant, the expectation is that the laundromat project will not provide be providing you with any additional production support. So the answer to this question is not typically. The funds are, are inclusive of production supplies and material costs. Um, we expect you to sort of develop these independently of the laundromat project. We'll, we'll, we'll fork over the dough but you know the rest is in your hands, so to speak. Um, however, you know depending on the nature of your project and what you're trying to do, um, we are open to opportunities for collaboration, um, and we will assess that on a case by case basis. So if this is something that you're looking for um, from the laundromat project, I would encourage you to sort of touch upon it a bit within your application if you have this sort of expectation of us, because this is our expectation right here. Um, <laughs> so the next question, are there any limitations on what can be purchased with the Korean Connect Fund? So the funds, um, $1,000 microgrant can be used for any aspect of the awarded proposal, including fees for commissions, um, for external labor, artist compensation for anyone you partner with, um, your own labor costs, right? Um, you deserve to get paid too. Um, production costs and supply costs. So, if we, so as long as it's relevant to the scope of your project, um, you know there there aren't uh, many limitations on on how you can use the funds. It just needs to be relevant to the execution and production of your project. 
And if you have any specific questions about that, you can always reach out to us as well. So the next question, um, oh, you said you'd like to say something. Yeah, before just before we move on, I saw in the chat um, that um, Miss Young um, was the one who asked, hi there, um, about the borrowing of supplies or using the LP space, which Alex answered, but I just want to um, double click on that for one second and go a little bit deeper to share that um, we are really interested in activating other parts of the neighborhood um, that are not necessarily the LP space. There might be just a perfect alignment. And so that's why we don't want to rule it out entirely where it just makes sense to have it in our storefront space on full turn. Um, in which case, of course, if we were having the event here, some of our supplies would be um, up for use, such as tables or, and chairs. But um, this is really, this Create and Connect Fund is really about um, connecting with the bedside neighborhood beyond the places that the LP is already connected um, or already situated. And so we would really like to see proposals that are looking beyond um, our space, but we also understand that space is a limited resource in Brooklyn and in Bed-Stuy. Um, and so if um, it's for some folks, it may not be possible um, or they might, they might not have um, a place that makes sense other than the LP, in which case, feel free to include that information in your application. Um, so I hope that helps answer the question a little bit more fully. Um, and go ahead, Alex, with the, the next set. I know you yeah. have got some yeah, we're, we're almost to the end, and then we'll we'll sort of, just to give folks a sense of time, we'll leave the latter ha half hour of the session open for um, discussion for any other questions that came up during this presentation. But thank you, Issa, for uplifting the chat. I didn't, I didn't get the ping on my Zoom. I don't know what happened. Um, but yes, um, the next question, can the Create and Connect Fund be used to support block parties and cultural festivals, um, provided there are arts activities that foster community engagement and connection? The answer to that question is yes, the fund can support arts and cultural festivals, including art making at block parties. However, um, all other criteria um, you know, listed and associated with the Korean Connect Fund application must be met. Um, so festivals should not include an admission fee, or at the very least, um, the, the funds uh, should not be used, should only be used for activities that are free to the public, right? If there's some component, of the block party or cultural festival that that requires admission, then um, it's a little bit tricky. But you know, we really only want to sort of support um, applications that that are free to the public, or you know, that act, the funded activity is free to the public. So moving on a little bit. Um, can the Create and Connect Fund support school programs for middle school and high school age kids in Bed-Stuy? Um, the answer to that is yes. However, priority will be given to the development of new projects within a, pro within a program, an existing program or continuing program, as well as informal groups with less access to funding sources. Um, so if you are sort of applying as part of a school, you're, you're applying technically as part of an existing organization, um, and we are really trying to diversify the, the types of projects and, and folks in the community we support with this, with this microgrant opportunity. Um, so preference will be given to new projects um, or new iterations uh, of, of projects within existing programs. So next question, once selected for the Create and Connect Fund, how long will it take to receive the funds? Um, which is an important question. I'm sure that's like a burning question in everyone's mind. When am I gonna get my money, right? When am I gonna get my money? Um, so you will receive funding um, about a month after receiving acceptance. Um, so, and following disbursement of funded projects, um, following the disbursement funded projects should occur within the next year. So by May 31st, 2024. Um, and yeah, so the expectation with acceptance of the Korean Connect Fund is that projects happen within the next year. Our next question, um, if I applied last year and was awarded the Korean Connect Fund, can I reapply? So this year, the Korean Connect Fund um, is specifically open to um, 
community members, folks that have not previously engaged with the laundromat project. Um, if you were previously awarded the Create and Connect Fund, you should apply for the Create and Reconnect Fund, which is a similar uh, micro grant opportunity um, made available specifically for our alumni, folks in the Laundromat Project's alumni network, folks that we worked with previously in past programs. Um, the exception to this rule is applicants who apply as part of a new collective um, undertaking a new project. Um, so if you are applying um, with a separate group of people or you have a different affiliation this time around and it's a, it's a brand new project as opposed to the project you were, you were funded for um, previously, then you can apply to the Create and Connect Fund. Um, and I'm going to pause for a moment. I see in the chat someone said they missed the last point on the high school junior high programs. So to reiterate the answer to that question, um, yes, the Green Connect Fund can support school programs for middle school and high school aged kids in bed -Stuy. However, um, as I said previously, priority will be given to the development of new projects um, within an existing program. So we're really, again, trying to seed and fund projects that are, are new, right, that bring something new to the community. And this is the last slide of Q and A's I promise before we get into our open discussion. Um, is a detailed budget required in the Korean Connect Fund application? The answer to that is no. We do not require applicants to submit a, a budget in depth. Um, we don't keep tabs on how you use the funds um, in, in depth once they're awarded. Um, however, it is always uh, helpful to in the selection process if you have a budget then can highlight how you will implement your proposed project and how that project will be made effective through the use of these funds. So it's not required, but it's always a nice little add-on to your proposal. For the proposed project and event in the application, is there a minimum number of participants that are required to participate? Nope, we do not require a minimum number of participants. However, again, we emphasize that the event be open to the public and free. And the last question, is the laundromat project open to funding a program that has also received other funding from other grants? Yes, we're not sticklers about that. We realize that it can be hard to come by grant funding. Um, so yes, we, we are open to supporting projects that are receiving additional support from other grant opportunities. And now we'll move into sort of the open discussion portion of this info session. Um, if you need to leave early or you have any specific questions you'd like to discuss after the fact or in private, you can email us at community at laundromatproject.org. You can also call us at 718-574-0798. So feel free to take that email down, take that number down um, if you'd like to contact us later. This information is also available on the Korean Connect Fund webpage on the laundromatproject.org website. And I thank you for your time. I'm going to stop screen sharing um, so I can see all of your wonderful faces and address any specific questions that you may have. Yeah. And if you are comfortable, you're free to sort of um, unmute yourself and speak your question. If you're, you can keep your camera on, keep your camera off. You can also submit questions in the chat and we'll address them. But yes, I see someone has is eager to ask a question. Celeste. Hi, uh, I've enjoyed the presentation. It's beautiful to hear about the work of the Create and Connect. Um, I'm just really loving everything I'm hearing. Um, question though, when we went over, when you went over the application itself, there were questions about education level, ethnicity, and things of that sort. So my question is, if we're applying for a group, for our group, um, that could be varied. Um, are we answering that question as the person who is actually submitting the application, or are we answering it in terms of the group? Because our, our group is very diverse. Yeah. Um, so... I don't know, Issa, you look like you want to say something. Sure. Um, that's a great question. Thanks, um, thank Issa. You. <laughs> thank you. Um, and so 
we ask that um so just to be clear the demographics questions that um are at the very end of the application those are optional um so just so everyone knows that does not that's not required to be filled out um i would recommend that either you go with a sort of general answer for like what what is true the most for the most part across your group or go with the person who is actually filling out the application on behalf of the group um that information is not shared anywhere it has no effect on your application it's completely separated out from the application um so there's there's no concern there um if your group has variations from what's submitted there um but what i will say is on the eligibility form which is the first form that will pop up when you click um, there are questions that might be different answers for different group members so for example it says what's your relationship to the bed -Stuy? well maybe nine people you have a 10 person group nine people in your group are born and bred in bed -Stuy, and one person in your group just moved here six months ago you you don't have to disclose all of that you can say like born and bred in bed -Stuy. just go with what seems um, what feels true and is most consistently true across your group um, for those eligibility questions and for those priority questions that are in the application. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. That was great. Thanks. Yeah. And I see Miss Bell has a question too. Hi, good afternoon. Um, again, I, I also would like to say that was a great presentation. I'm really happy that I joined. Um, my question is, let's say that you have a project, are you open to collaborating with public sectors outside of like the DOE or let's say the DYCD, maybe something like a garden or maybe even yep. the public library? Is that um, possible? <laughs> yes, absolutely. So um, we have a very sort of, it's in our list of like uh, project examples or eligible project examples, we do mention that we're open to collaborations with entities like community gardens, right? Community gardens um, being an extension of um, the parks department, um, but also operated um, on a voluntary basis by members in the community. So to answer your question, yes, we're open to collaboration with gardens, with libraries um, that fit the other criteria mentioned in the Green Connect Fund application. And I would even say we encourage it. We encourage you to activate um, additional spaces, especially public spaces um, in Bed-Stuy. Um, that, that's something we're really looking for. And I'll also share that um, though we are really interested in something that is bringing something new to the neighborhood that's filling a need that hasn't been met yet, um, which Alex lifted up when we were talking about school groups earlier um i will say we also recognize that a lot of projects have been going on for a long time and yeah. haven't gotten funding that they deserve or need to keep going um and so we're there's definitely um a um space for um projects that have been existing um just sort of interested in like what what some what is something new you might want to bring to the project like how can the $1,000 help you accomplish something that maybe was in the plans for a long time, but just couldn't happen because the funding wasn't there. Let us know that element um, so that we can really see, um, you know, how how this micro grant is supporting community members and projects. So that's all I'll add about that. Does that answer your question, Ms. Bell? Yes, thank you. Yeah, and, and we'll be reading all the applications. It's not going to go through like an automated system and be sorted out, you know, without any kind of human interaction. So if you make a case and explain your project well, um, again, we're looking for clarity. Um, you know, we'll definitely consider it. Awesome. Does anyone else have any any questions? And again, feel free to, to type in the chat. Um, and if you're comfortable coming off mute, you, you're welcome to come off mute and ask a question as well. Jess, I see you have a, a question that was sent to me in the chat. Um, is it a question that I could answer generally, or would you like me to respond to you specifically in the chat? Okay. Um, 
Anna, yes, this recording will be available later on the LP page and anyone who's registered will be um, receiving the recording link in case there's something you want to go back to. Um, and I will read um, Jess's note in the chat. Um, thank you, Isa, Alex, and LP for helpful webinar, seminar. We appreciate you. I, we appreciate you too and everyone who's here. Um, um, working at the Concord House, um, a transitional shelter in the Bronx, um, and supporting an artist who lives um, and is born and raised from bed -Stuy. Can we um, give the artist support with resources? And so, yes, I will say like, if you, just because you're on the call doesn't mean you're the only one who might be interested in applying. You might know someone through your work, through your community who might also be eligible. Even if you aren't eligible for whatever reason, please do share this opportunity with them and you can um, help someone else apply. We recognize that not everyone who would benefit from um, this funding has the um, capacity, skills, um, access to internet, et cetera, to be able to fill out the application on their own. Um, and so not only are we a resource to help with filling out applications, um, if there's someone that you're thinking could benefit from this, that you could help fill out an application, you are welcome to do that. Please just note it somewhere on um, the form and make sure that the person that we would be getting in contact with to notify um, about the award is um, a person that we can um, get in touch with and make sure that we we get the funding to the right person. Um, so I'll just say that, please feel free to help each other out. That's what community is all about. Um, so feel free to help someone else with an application. Just make sure, of course, that you've gotten their consent. They know you're doing this. Um, they want it. They are asking for your help um, and that you're not sort of, we don't really want to operate on a charity model where we're just thinking, oh, I'm going to put someone else up for this um, without talking to them first. So I'll just give that caveat. Um, yeah, great, Jess. Thanks for asking your question. Any other yeah. questions? And, and a little something I wanted to add on. Um, if you need individualized support with your application for any reason, um, you can always reach out to us um, via email at community at laundromatproject.org. And we can set up um, you know, a private appointment, private meeting to discuss um, any further questions you might have, You know, help you to sort of review drafts of your application even, um, and you know, support you fully, um, as fully as we can, at least throughout the application process. Um, because we are we are people focused. We are a people focused organization, community focused organization. Um, so we will definitely respond um, if you need help with uh, those kinds of tasks. Um, and something I also just wanted to uplift um, that Itza mentioned in the chat a little earlier. Um, on Thursday, April 27th from 5 to 7 p.m., we will be hosting open hours for an application assistance session um, where folks are welcome to, to come into our storefront. Um, at 1476 Fulton Street to receive um, in-person, you know, one-on-one -on -one support with their application. Um, yeah, so if you are still um, in need of help by, by the 27th of April, you're welcome to come on down to the LP storefront. Um, and if that time doesn't work, again, you can always reach out to us via email, community at laundromatproject.org um, and set up a private appointment. So I see another question in the chat um, that I'll read out since it's a direct message to me. Um, so question, um, are you required to have a tax exemption capacity or are they required to have a current organized bank or credit union account? Um, so uh, on, on term, in terms of tax exemption, this, uh, this fund is taxable just to let you know. Um, so that's something to consider in terms of how you use the funds. Um, since the, this amount is taxable, should um, you know mention that to your accountant at some point, maybe save a little bit off the top um, to, to, to go towards that, um, that fee come, come tax season next year. Um, and Miss, I believe Miss Miss Ina um, McPherson is the one who asked that question. I don't know if if I answered your question fully. If if you'd like to expand on it, you're you're welcome to.
Yeah, and another note, um, just sort of on payment um, and how we sort of disperse the funds for the Korean Connect Fund. Um, you know, we can disperse the funds um, via Zelle, via direct transfer, ACH. Um, we can disperse the funds via PayPal. Um, you know, th these um, options are, are listed in the FAQ section of our, our website under 2023 Korean Connect Fund page. Um, but we're also open to sort of other sort of um, modes of disbursement as well, um, provided we have enough time to, to figure out if we have an account that can get that can support that um, support that disbursement need. And as we move further along into the process, um, it might come up that you want to um, you might be finding a partner organization that you're. Um, creating your proposal with perhaps that organization is, you know, a 5013C3. Um, Maybe they can accept the award on your behalf as a sort of fiscal conduit. So there are different, um, you know, workarounds there if there is a concern at all about how the funds are dispersed. And that's definitely something that we can um, connect with in a private appointment or at our five. 7 p.m. on the 27th. So that's not this Thursday, but next Thursday at that session, we can sort of get more into your project, your details, and figure out um, whether that's an option that makes sense for you um, because of tax or um, finance purposes. I know sometimes folks um, don't have the documentation that they would need to receive funds, for example, um, through an ACH payment. So we are definitely open to trying to make this as accessible as possible and we'll work with y'all to figure out um, what, what we can do if your application is awarded. So just throwing that out there. Yeah, and to anyone that gets selected and awarded the Korean Connect Fund, you can email us like a year from now, like when it comes to that, that point, um, we're not going to ignore your email or, or stonewall you or anything like that because you know um, we're expecting this project to develop independently of us. Um, you know, we're we're here to help you um, in your process, and you know, in working with communities, sometimes that means answering questions around like how to how to navigate like you know grants come tax season. Um, so we're we're very much so uh, welcome anyone who has questions further down the line, um, any questions in the future, um, uh, post maybe post the grant application award. Awesome. Does anyone um, else? Oh, I okay. do see a question in the chat. If you if um, your group doesn't have a um, 501C, are you eligible? You have a tax ID? Yes, you are eligible. You do not need to be a nonprofit. You can be an individual and still be eligible for this award. Um, and I'll also say that even if, um, you know, we have a nice full Zoom room here today. Um, we've already got some applications rolling in. Um, <laughs> excuse me. At this point, we do only have 20 awards, but that doesn't mean that, um, you know, just because you weren't awarded this time that we don't want to work with you or support your project. Um, so please do um, get to know us. Come by for the 5 to 7 p.m. session. Even if you can only stay for 10 minutes, it's not, it, we're just, it's just open hours. <clears throat> excuse me for us to meet you, get to know about your project and figure out how we can support you. This is just one offering that the LP has, which is more of a financial offering, um, but we also have other resources. We have time, we have space um, that we can definitely talk about how we can support your work. Yeah, and to, to add on to that, um, there was a Korean Connect Fund applicant um, in our network who did not get awarded the fund. Um, who had applied, I think, once or twice previously. But then um, within the past couple of months, we engaged them um, in support of their work, right? We, we produced a public program um, celebrating their, their own artistry, providing space for, for them to, to conduct an artist talk and show their own work. So as Issa said, there are many, the Korean Connect Fund is, is one touch point between all of y'all here today and the laundromat project. We are open to other sort of modes of collaboration. Um, all, but of course, all of that begins with a discussion. So if there's something um, you're really sort of passionate about, interested in sort of producing for, for Bed-Stuy, um, and you, you don't get awarded the application, that doesn't mean we can't work together in the future. 
right? It, it has definitely happened before. Yeah, and I see some folks have to hop off soon. So I'm gonna make a, a last call for, for any questions. Does anyone have any sort of last minute questions um, for this, for our info session today? And I'll give it a moment in case anyone's typing in the in the chat. Um, but you know, to reiterate, if you have any uh, further questions, maybe you need a moment to digest all of this information to to review the application again in depth. Um, feel free to reach out to us via email, um, communityonlinemapproject.org. Feel free to call us. Um, feel free to even stop by our storefront um, if you're in the neighborhood. Thank you all so much. It was great to be here with you. Definitely recommend um, taking a look at the application if you are coming to the 5 to 7 p.m. hours next Thursday on the 27th. Um, that, that's really going to be a great time for us to get into your, um, you know, your questions that are more like, oh, I wrote this paragraph. Like, does this explain this properly? Like, we really can like actually get in there and workshop with you. So if you can um, prepare, and I know life happens, we're all busy. Maybe you can't, that's totally cool. We're still going to welcome you in and get what we can get done. Um, but I definitely encourage you if you can come prepared with some ideas. Um, if you are someone who might need help typing or need access to the internet, you can just come during that time and just work using our internet. Um, there's lots of different options. So just sharing that with y'all. Yes, thank you, thank you. And seeing as how everyone's saying thank you in the chat, I suppose this is our closing moment for our session here today. Again, thank you all for coming, for signing up, for, for, for telling us all about your wonderful project proposals through the Korean Connect Fund application. We're looking forward to reviewing them. Um, and we hope to reach out soon. Um, with with notifications. So thank you again.